Welcome to the Marvel Evolution Show with myself, Andy Stead. And I'm Jarian Gibson. And we have got two guests on today. We have been joined by our colleague, I guess, the RMC. How are we doing, RMC? Good. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's good to have you back. You haven't been on for, for a while and uh, we have yeah. back for a, for, a, for a pretty special reason. And um, we've got uh, another guest on. Um, we've got, uh, we've got Lucky. Lucky, you're going to have to tell me, how do you pronounce your surname? Uh, it's Lucky Manjoni. Manjoni, right. We've got yeah. Lucky Manjoni. Lucky, we're going to get stuck into talking to you in a li in very, very shortly. Um, but we have, we've gone live now and uh, Lucky's been working out in the gym. You know, he's, he's, he's a hard worker. I like that. <laughs> so he's like, we're cutting it fine, but we've gone live. So we're going to start, um, we're going to start the show off how we normally do. Uh, lucky and then we're going to get talking to you and explain to these guys that are listening exactly who you are and why you're here and what we're going to talk about and hopefully we'll get some questions from from the guys listening in um but yeah um he's, he's gone he's gone black he's gone dark he's gone dark all right, right. Gonna make... all right come back there, there you are there he is um anyway jarian how are you my friend how are you i know you've had Dude. a long drive this weekend yeah, doing great. Just getting back in the mix of things. Uh, had a long drive over the weekend, but uh, ready to go. Good stuff. Good stuff. And RMC, I know you come back from illness the last couple of days. How you been? On the mend. I'm on. I'm on the mend. Better, but uh, I can still feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Soldiering on. That's what yeah. we like. Soldiering on. Um, so uh, this week we are we are joined by uh, by Lucky. Um, Lucky, once you've once you've orientated your camera, um, we got your ear at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm 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 moving over here. Okay, right. nice, nice, nice. There he is. There he is. I can see you. I can see you better. There it is. There it is. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. So, um, so Lucky, we we got introduced to you, um, through through RMC through Ransom actually, um. It, Ransom's a big Wolverine fan and um oh yeah huge, huge Wolverine fan yeah huge Wolverine fan and um he, he introduced us to you kind of said I let you know I'm speaking to this guy I'm gonna ask him to join our group um we're gonna uh, you know he, he's a he's a great guy and we was like okay so who is he and what does he do so it's not for me or for Ransom or for Giant to tell everybody what you do so so what do you do Lucky what why why have we invited you on what do you want you know so a I am a an inspiring actor. I've been acting for about 14, 15 years. Um, I do a lot of independent films here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I travel to Atlanta. Sometimes I go to LA to do some auditioning uh, when I had the chance. Um, I've been in movies such as Goosebumps and The Hunger Games and the movie Ride Along. Um, I, I do that full time and I moonlight as a server and a bartender to make ends meet. Um, in October, I am moving to Atlanta, Georgia to, uh, pursue acting full-time on a full-time scale. And if things work out there, uh, for six months to a year, I'm hoping to make the move out to San Diego to be closer to LA. Um, Atlanta has a lot of stuff right now. I mean, they do all the Marvel movies. They do uh, the hot, they do the hunger game. It's hot right now. Huh? It's hot right now. Yeah, it's, it's Atlanta. It's, it's, the, the thing is, what people don't realize is a lot of the bigger roles are going to actors that are coming from L.A. So they fly the actor from L.A. to Atlanta, and the people in Atlanta are only getting, like, day player roles, or you know, they might get a series regular every once in a while. I have a good friend of mine named Kevin. He is a series regular on the show The Ozark. He plays the preacher on The Ozark show. Oh, yeah, he great show. Jump to Atlanta. But he, like I said, you know, I'm trying to get bigger roles, but the only way for me to do that is to go to Atlanta first and get my foot in the door there with the casting directors out there, um, make some moves you know, as much as I can. And you, you never know. I mean, I might not have to go to LA. I might get picked up for a great show or a great film and I can stay in Atlanta. Uh, sure. But the goal is to make it, you know, the top, you know, and not just be some guy that, you know, ambulance driver number one, you know, I want, <laughs> I want lead and supporting roles. And that's my goal. It's been my goal since I was a kid. And, 
it's coming to fruition every single day of my life. And I, I, I strive to be better every day to do it. You, you know, um, we're friends on Facebook now and, and I see, yeah. um, lots of parallels between what you do and what another friend of mine who's in the music industry over here in, in, uh, England, um, he's, he's just the level of work and dedication that, um, yep. that yeah. you guys put in to, to make yeah. it. It's, to a, lot of, it's a lot of work. And I tell you something else, it's a lot of people don't realize, you know, I have people all the time who tell me, oh, I want, I want to be an actor or I want to be this. And I tell them you can do it, but you just got to remember that it's the one thing in the world. Acting is the one thing in the world that, um, you're going to get a lot of no's all the time. You know, you get rejected right yeah. and left. The rejection, and it doesn't mean that you're a good actor or a bad actor. It just means that you weren't right for that part. You know, it's a rejection where people say, Hey, I'm too short for a role or I'm, I'm, or my eyes are brown or, you know, I don't have hair. I mean, there's so many things that go into it, but you got to take that with for every no that you get, there's going to be that one yes that someone's going to give you, you know? And I tell, you know, as a joke, I tell people all the time. You know, if I ask a girl that I, I get rejected, it doesn't bother me at all. It, it bothers me when I get rejected for a role. <laughs> that <laughs> bothers, me more. It bothers me more than anything. I can take rejection because I'm used to it. I'm used to get rejected for parts and roles, but I put the work in and I'm very passionate about entertaining people. And that's what it comes down to when it comes to movies and TV. You know, um, I, I think uh, a few weeks ago, the Thor movie came out. And I saw a lot of negativity about the movie. People hated it. They didn't like the where it was going. They didn't like the comedy part. And I told a friend of mine, I said, you know, I went in this film with the mindset of I want to enjoy a film. That's it. I, I, I want to sit down and I want to enjoy a film because if you think about it, before the internet happened, before social media happened, for all the people who were like, you know, either bring a movie up or bring a movie down, everyone has an opinion about something, which is fine. And we were allowed to have opinions, but I tell people all the time, at one point in our lives, we went to movies to escape things. We went there to get away from, you know, family life, or we had a bad day at work or a bad day at school. And we wanted to be entertained by these actors that are betraying people that are made, you know, make believe people. And that was the thing for me. Like I went in there thinking, Hey, I'm going to watch a comic book here. I grew up reading and I love, and I enjoyed, and I had a great time watching the movie. It didn't matter if. Gore the God Butcher was exactly, didn't look exactly like he did at the comic, or Thor was co comedic. I laughed and I, I teared up a little bit because I have a daughter and it was a great time for me. And so that's what I want to bring to people. I want to be able to entertain people and I want to be able to become a, you know, a character in a film or, or a series that makes people forget about the worries. And I think that's what acting really is. It's making people forget about what they're doing at the time. And we're sitting back and relaxing and enjoying something to watch. Oh, good luck. I've, I've got, a, I've got a lump in my throat. That was awesome. <laughs> like, you, you know, it's, you, you, you're born to do that. You know, I was just, I was going to turn around and say to these guys, like, he's good at this. <laughs> he's pretty, he's pretty, he's pretty got good. got the right it. mindset, you know, and got the right attitude about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to. Yeah, no, and, and, um, I really like, uh, what you were saying there about sort of, um, growing a bit of a thick skin, you know, and receiving so many no's and receiving so many rejections and still, but looking at each one of those rejections as an opportunity for you to then grow and an opportunity for you to then go, right, okay, that's going to add something to, to, to me rather than take something away. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's become, it, it, it's almost exactly. like you're turning that into a positive. You're turning that into more motivation to go out there and try yeah. again. And what was it? JK Rowling tried to sell, um, the Harry Potter books. Like she went to 13 different publishers before somebody said yes, you know? Um, so somebody said no 13 times and she just kept going and going and going. And yeah, you, you got to, you got to be percent and you, and you got to, to me, you, you know, there's a lot of people who, who will tell me or I've heard people say, oh yeah, I want to be an actor because they make so much money. And you can be surprised at the amount of people that make a lot of money compared to the ones who don't make money. You would think everyone that's acting is making tons of money and they don't. There's only a select few people in the right. industry that make millions and millions of dollars. You know, you got Tom Cruise, your Harrison Ford, you know, the Chris Hemsworth, you know, people like that are making, but they, they started at the bottom, you know, and mm -hmm. they put their dues in and they put their time in and they put, it didn't happen overnight. I mean, even the kids that do the stranger things show in Atlanta, 
it, 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 this was their first break. They were doing Broadway and they were busting their butts, you know, making ends meet and putting the work in and getting rejected and, you know, taking classes and, and learning stuff. Um, to, to do you have to invest in yourself. Yeah, and they do it because they don't do it because of the money. Look, if you're in a, if you want to be in this business because of the money, then you need to get out of this. You're in the business <laughs> yeah, I market. agree. I agree. And you do it because you love it. Now, of course, I want to make a living doing it, and I you know, and I want to make a comfortable living. I'm 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 a pretty simple person. I don't need a lot in life. I want to pay my bills, have a nice place to stay, a car to get me from point A to point B, and every once in a while, you know, go to a Comic Con in San Diego. <laughs> you know, just things that I don't have to, you know, I don't want to struggle, you know, and I'm a struggling actor. I'm the epitome of a struggling actor. I, you know, work my butt off to make ends meet. I live paycheck to paycheck sometimes, but I love to act. I love to entertain people. I don't care if it's acting or singing or dancing. It's what I love and what I'm a passionate about. And it's never been about the money. It's about expressing myself in a way, in an artistic form to people that, can make people if i can make someone smile there's one person that smiles because they love that that something i did then i feel like i did a great job and that's that's a good payment for me yeah, yeah. you definitely right jari so 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 lucky i don't know whether you um well i think you were aware of this before we came on but obviously this goes out live on our facebook group and a few of other places twitch and a couple of other places and so often quite often we get comments from people that are listening um and jari and always he's, he's our link jaren's our link between the people that are listening and uh and us guys so Jaren, there's a there's a nice little comment up there on on the screen. Yeah, Roxy from the group says, "Wow, that was a powerful speech. Thank you." And I completely agree with her, especially when you said the comment about being able to enjoy the whether it's the movie or the show or whatever, and talking about the negative comments. You know, and that's exactly what you're in it for. I have two younger kids, and being able to enjoy this content with them and seeing how they get into it, that's what it's all about for me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, remember, remember when we were kids and we watched, you know, cartoon, we'd watch the Flintstones or Scooby Doo. We didn't judge how the artist do Scooby Doo or, or <laughs> the way the guy talked or, so forth, or that Shaggy ran in one door and came out. You know, we didn't, you know, we didn't get upset about these kind of things, you know, but now it feels like everyone gets upset. Every, I think everyone thinks that every Marvel yeah. film that comes out has to be an Academy Award winning film or an Oscar performance from a, a character, and it doesn't. What it needs to be, it, it needs, entertaining and it needs we're spoiled a lot yeah we are a exactly. spoiled lot when it comes to that i mean i've been critical myself but even so it, it, even though it's the like my least favorite it's still a 250 million dollar film you know exact exactly and the funniest part is when I, when I see filmmaker friends go oh that movie is horrible they give all this stuff my reply to them is okay if you think you can do it better then you do it you yeah, exactly. it. right right you know, if you think you're so great, like, let me see what you've got, you know, because, you know, we, you know, the only thing that we can do is, is human beings, um, is to strive to become better people at what we do. And, and that takes not just one person, it takes an army of people to do it. And it takes a support system from people and it takes people being positive and not being negative. Because when you get negative thoughts upon you all the time, then you become negative. But when people build you up and, and pick you up and, and, and try to you know, push you in the right direction. I think you become a better person because you surround yourself with better people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's the, um, I, I heard once that they said that you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really, nice, true. really nice way I look at it. And, um, you know, like you said, if you, you, where you are now, you know, you've just been in the gym trying to better yourself and you're around other people that are trying to better themselves and you just get those positive vibes all the time about people that are trying to improve their lives in, in, in any way. It doesn't have to be physical or, or mental. It could be within their business. It could be, you know, um, in their relationships or, you know, yeah, anything, but if they're trying to improve themselves, um, and it they, connects, it all connects it, it, the physical, you know, I start working out because. I wanted to feel better about myself and it, and it makes me feel better when I'm in the gym working out and I'm, I'm, I'm lifting weights and I'm, I'm, you know, trying to get bigger, but I'm doing it for a reason. Um, you know, I'll go ahead and say it now I, I'm really wanting to, uh, try to get an audition for the role of the Wolverine in the MCU. Um, I, I'm the right build. I'm the right height. I've got a pretty decent, um, resume on my list. Uh, my agent is friends with Sarah Finn. Uh, she knows her very well. I've been submitted to them. They know who I am. They know what I look like. They've seen my work, but there's nothing I can do, but I can't rush the process to process. 
you know, and I, I might not ever get a chance to play the role. I might not even get a chance to audition, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to put the work in right now for the future. Because right now, as, as everybody knows, and if you don't know, they can't bring the X-Men to the MCU until 2025 because the contract from Fox states that if they make a film, all the actors who played the roles before get in their contract states that they get to play the roles. So no one is getting the role of Wolverine or, or Storm or anybody until yeah. 2025 anyway. That's three more years. Well, two years, technically, if, you, if it's because this year's almost up. But to me, that that's right. good for me because I'm thinking, hey, then I'm going to keep working out. I'm going to keep lifting. I'm going to keep training. I'm going to keep doing uh, small independent films. I'm going to get my, my resume up. And then when it comes time, I'll send her another reel. Let her see my work, see what she likes, you know, what she thinks. Because you never know. You know, I might get an audition. They might go, hey, you're not right for this part, but I have a part for you. And that's the way I think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You might be a good stunt double, too. You never know, man, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could be. I, I, I hate doing stunts, so I, I can't lie to you. <laughs> that's right up my alley. I'd love it. <laughs> I, I, did, I, did stunts, I did stunts years ago. And uh, just not, not, not a, a fun thing. Yeah, it depends what the stunt is. You know, some things I don't mind doing, but I don't, yeah. don't want to get caught on fire. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so, so we we've kind of touched on it already. I mean, I think we've got a really great um, overview of who you are and why you do what you do. Which I, I've always, for me, I, I always say start with why. And if you don't know Simon Sinek's work, go and check out Simon Sinek's work. I think I've said this a million times before. But if you've never watched Simon Sinek, he's got like the second most viewed TED Talk of all time behind uh sir ken robinson um but anyway simon Sinek, start with why you've started with why you've told us your why you've told us who you, you know who you are and why you do what you do which is great um but obviously you're here and we're on a, 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 a the marvel evolution show you know we talk about marvel yeah touched on it already a little bit you know talking about wolverine but um you know so so we'd like we'd like to talk a little bit of marvel with you really you know absolutely uh, get specific get specific so just um within the world of sort of Marvel, what got you into Marvel stuff in the first place, whether that was show, okay. these comics, cartoons, what? So when I was a kid, um, I, I was very small growing up, a very, a very, very tiny kid. And I mean, like, I mean, when I was like seven and eight, I looked like I was three. I mean, I was skinny and small and, and just you, you could blow and I would fall over. I mean, I was that small. My family owned martial arts schools. My father owned almost 42 karate schools uh, across the nation. He owned some in New York, in North Carolina, in Virginia, D.C. My dad was a very well-known martial artist. Um, I grew up uh, around a lot of great martial artists. And I don't mean people like Bruce Lee and Jet Li and stuff like that. I mean like guys that were in the Marines and the military that yeah. earned it in Okinawa and in the 50s and brought it back to the United States. My dad is one of the first guys to open the first martial arts school in the country, along with a guy named Don Nagel and a guy named Don Bohan uh, and Gary Alexander, who are, I mean, they're like, they're world famous martial artists in, in that martial arts community. And, you know, we would go to karate tournaments and I was always afraid to fight, but my dad knew I had potential. He knew I was fast, agile, and we were in um, Patterson, New Jersey, and my dad was like, hey, I'll tell you what, if, if don't get scared and do really well. If you don't have to play, just do your best. Just go in there and, and, you know, don't back down. He's like, I'm going to do something for you. And so I went to this tournament. The first guy I thought had to be like, you know, I'm like three foot nine at the time, probably. And this guy was like five foot ten, you know, whatever the his height was. I mean, it was. A, I mean, it was enormous. It was like Andre the Giant and, and a Smurf is what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> And the guy, the guy just nailed me. I mean, he kicked me so hard. I, I, I felt my, my stomach in the back of my, in the back of my neck, but I didn't stop. I kept on going. I kept on getting hit, but I didn't back down from this kid. And I was in tears and I was crying. And, but I did what my dad asked me to do. And my dad took me to a comic book store and bought me my first comic. And it was an X-Men comic. And I have the comic to this day. And I, and I don't know that that's awesome it is for the life of me, but the comic book, uh, owner was telling me about Wolverine and he's telling me that he's short, he's small, and <laughs> he's, he's this guy that he doesn't back down from nobody and he has this code of honor and he and, and he he's kind of a loner and at the time of my life I was a bit of a loner and he goes, 
he has friends, but he keeps them apart because he's kind of, you know, you know, reading these books my whole life, I always took Logan, you know, Wolverine as this guy that has this a crazy, amazing power to heal. But the saddest part of him is that he has to go through his whole life watching everyone around him die. Right. Or, or get killed right in front of him. People, you know, he's a target. Or have to kill him himself. Yeah, exactly. Or he has to get, exactly. And so what kind of life is that? You know, that's gotta be, that's, that's the saddest to it in a way, because he wants to die. He doesn't want to live forever, but at the same time, he's a fighter and he's not going to quit living either. So there's that, there's that, you know, that balance he's trying to find. It, it's like the part of a samurai warrior in a sense. And the next tournament, my dad bought me a gi. And he had printed a, um, I can't remember, it was a John Romita or John, I think it was John Byrne picture of Wolverine on the back of my gi. And I went to the tournament and I had to be maybe nine years old at the time. And we were in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I went to the tournament and I beat everybody in the tournament. I mean, I, I beat everybody. I had this like, this, this thing about me. I'm thinking, oh, I'm the Wolverine, you know? And I won that tournament. And I kept on winning and I kept on winning. And I, over the years, I just, I, I, I was known as a fighter. And in 1998, um, I won my first super world grand championship for the NBA and I won the world championship from fight. And from, from the age of 18 to 22, I was undefeated. I was, I was the national ranked number one fighter in the nation for martial arts for karate. And wow. And it turned, and what happened was at that first step of that comic book, Every time I would win a tournament, my dad would say, if you place, I'll buy you a, a comic book of your choice. And I had <laughs> about third place. I got this amount of money. This, and I would win first place all the time. And my dad was like, you're breaking me. And it turned into a collection of comics and toys. I still have Beagle figures. I still have a Secret War figures back in, from the 80s. And they're still in the past. I never even opened them up when I was a kid. I just kept them. Uh -huh. And, you know, when I turned... Jarian's like, face. Sorry, Jarian's face. It was like... Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I have all these. I, I even have my dad even went to the level of I went I won a tournament in Atlanta called the Battle of Atlanta. And my dad got me the Constrictor Electro and Iceman Sear Wars figure as a present from me. He ordered from a company in Germany. And I, I got that tournament. And when I turned 22, it's a horrible tattoo, but I have a tattoo of Wolverine on my arm. And that Wolverine isn't just about comic book character, but my dad teaching me that in life, you know, it doesn't matter what you look like, how big you are, anything like that, that, that the saddest thing in life is wasting talent and that you can't waste it and you got to do good with it. So it's a reminder of my dad, show me who he, that character was. And over the years, it was an inspiration for me. It was an inspiration for me and him, and him as a character of who I wanted to be like and really about my dad. And it That's became awesome. a love and comic books for me. And I just, from that point on, I, since I was like eight, nine years old, I fell in love with comics. I've been reading them ever since. That's just, that's just a great story. That's just a great story. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. That was brilliant. Yes. I really Thank enjoyed you. listening to that. And Thank you. Roxy from Thank you. Let the, me the group, guys. And Roxy from the group says, wow, congratulations. That is amazing. And completely agree with that, Roxy. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Roxy. Brilliant. Um, so, okay. So we, 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 we know you are, we know why you do what you do. We know why you got into Marvel. So, um, you know, where I know you said that you, you want to go for this, uh, this part of Wolverine, uh, in the MCU, yeah. we know we've got a few years that we can wait. I heard that rumor, what you just said there about the, um, uh, them not being able to cast new actors in that role. So is that, that's actually a, a thing, is it? I mean, Jarian's our kind of sort of news guy. He does a bit. It, of it is. It's a contract that Fox had when Fox owned. So it, mm -hmm, way back. probably you know when Marvel sold the rights to a lot of the characters, they, 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 they bought, what happened was that certain entities bought certain properties yep. and Fox got the properties to the X-Men. Well, there's a contract that with all the actors that played like Storm, like Halle Berry, Hugh Jackman, all these characters signed a contract and they are not allowed to cast anybody at all into 2025. So if they cast somebody, they have to give the role to Storm to Halle Berry. It's in her contract that if they try to make an X-Men film, she has a first, it's called first rights or refusal. It means that she gets the part unless she refuses it and she can, and she can say, okay, I don't want it. Somebody else can have it. Gotcha. How does it, how does it apply to the, the younger recast though, that we saw the new storm, the new Cyclops, 
the new gene, does that apply to them as well? Or just the older original X-Men? Just, just, I, I believe it's just the older original. I could be wrong, but I think with that, because, um, Fox did the new ones too, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. In the contract, there states something they, they, it's a certain amount of time, I believe that they can do it. And I think Storm or all the characters said, Hey, you can have this part, but they still have the right. So like I said, they, they refuse okay. that right to that part, but they still get first dibs. So the next thing that comes out, they get dibs. And let's say, say, Hey, we don't want it. You can give it to somebody else. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that, that Disney and that deal did it. Cause you would think as part of the negotiation deal that Disney could probably buy those out or have some kind Something. of, yeah, some kind and, of settlement. I think that, and I yeah. think that was the, that was the, uh, was the some kind of guarantee that they can. Disney. You know, I think they said they were smart and said, nah, you know, we're going to give you some of it. But we're not going to give you all of it. We're going to keep a little bit of a, of a threat. Well, there's nothing, there's the nothing stopping them from bringing in mutants in general. They just can't be the X-Men characters, right? Those exactly. ones that are under like contract. Said, they yeah, can be Fox. more obscure. Yeah. So, they, have, they can be very obscure. Yeah. So yeah. it's really hard. Bit. Go on, Luck. Say, say no, go for it. Oh, I, I was saying that I really hope that once they do bring the X-Men in, you know, I, I really would like to see, this is just my opinion. I would like to see the original team first, uh, you know, the original, original team, but I don't want them to be young actors. I want to see them seasoned actors, uh, that, you know, have a, not a lot of age on them, but you know, maybe in their, you know, early thirties, you know, maybe late twenties and maybe sure. do flashback scenes with the younger X-Men as well to show them how they were kids, like, you know, little, little flashback scenes in, in the process. So you'll have two like guys for side club. You'll have two guys for, um, uh, Jean, girls for Jean Grey to show them how they grew up and what they went through. And, and that way you give it a bit of an origin, but start of them as an older group. Cause I feel like that's what they should be. I mean, we've seen, yeah. you know, that's just, that's just me. Uh, I, I would like to see that personally. Uh, uh, and I, I, I like, agree. Yeah. And I would also like to see. Just me, probably being an actor, I, I want to see some unknown actors. I I, I don't want to see, yeah. you know, Tom Hardy as. I don't want to see know, a mega star. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I know. I, I want to see an unknown actor because I feel like they're going to bring something different to it than anybody else would. It's going to be raw. Yeah. It's going to be raw performance. Somebody's going to be hungry. Perfect yep. break. And and not only that, but you can't compare. You know, let's say I got the role of Wolverine. No one's going to compare me to Hugh Jackman because I'm new. I'm a brand. I mean, they yeah. might. You know, but if you take Tom Hardy as Wolverine, then they're gonna oh, you can get eaten alive no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever gets that role is going to get it, no matter <laughs> what. Gonna get it no matter what. And that's the thing. Yeah. And I'm just hoping that, um, like I said, that it's some unknown, you know, unknown actors that we've not really heard about. You know, they they may have maybe done a TV show here or there or made an appearance or in a movie, but it would be nice to see something new and fresh because, you know, Tom Cruise, Tom Hardy, all those guys have been around for quite some time. They started from the bottom and someone had to give them a break. Absolutely. And look, you know, and the way I look at it is they've gotten to eat off that plate of success. Mm. Let someone else have some of that success. Now you got to share that plate. You got to share that food. You got to be, be plentiful and share that wealth with people. Cause if you don't, those people aren't going to go anywhere. They're going to be in the back burner the whole time. They're not going to get a chance to shine because there's a lot of great actors in this world that haven't even got a smidget of success that they deserve because you know they're not the that's why that network you're going down there to build is so important you know yes yeah, exactly you got to know people yeah. i've been i've been talking today so um uh about the the commonwealth games at the moment are going on um so the athletics and the gymnastics and swimming and, and things it's all all from the the commonwealth yeah and um i've been talking today to a lot of people about um what it takes to get to that kind of level of performance, like sporting performance. And it takes a lot of things and it takes, it takes natural, you know, genetic ability, you know, uh, for example, if, if you're not over six foot, over six foot five, close to seven foot, you're probably not going to be a basketball player. I mean, not, not, to, say that there, not to say that there's not any, but you probably ain't going to be, um, you know, if you're, if you are seven foot, you're probably not going to be a gymnast. You know, so j just talking, yeah. Yeah, j you know, natural things. Um, then there's also, uh, you know, the, the, the training that you have to put in. If you haven't got the desire to actually put the effort in, doesn't matter how naturally gifted you are, you're not going to get there. But there's also the, um, 
being in the right place at the right time, that kind of yep. bin sure. spot, you know? Let you, no, I, look, I, I, look, you couldn't have said that any better. Um, I, I funny story, I did a movie called Goosebump with Jack Black, the first Goosebump movie, and I, and I played one of the main monsters in the film. And, and the reason I got that part is because I did a, I did a little part in a movie called Last Vegas, Michael Douglas, and the PA put mm. me in this Morgan Freeman. And I'm right there on camera. I, I, I had a speaking part, but they took the speaking part out, but I'm still on camera. And during the set, I was to see myself and I was dancing. I was doing some break dancing outside and the producer saw me. And a year later, I get a phone call from the cast director in Atlanta. It says, Hey, we need you in Atlanta right now. And I go for what? She goes for a film. I got it. I did it. She goes, we know you didn't, but the producer saw you a year ago in a film. There it is. And really liked your vibe, liked your attitude. Said that you were an amazing dancer and thought that you would fit really well with one of the uh, scenes in the movie. And I drove down to Atlanta, you know, three and a half hours. I walk into Screen Gym Studio and I walk in. There's Jack Black right there, sit down. That's the awesome. The director, the director, and they had me do all these weird things. They had me dance for them. And I go, okay, that's great. Thank you. I, I we'll call you for interest. It was, was what I said. I'm like, what? I'm like, I just drove three and a half hours for that. <laughs> <laughs> and five minutes later, I get a phone call. Literally, I was five minutes in a row, and the cast member called me and said, hey, Come back. They loved you. They want to book you. And I booked the role. Brilliant. Nice. Being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. That's, uh, you're always auditioning. You know, if you go down to Atlanta, you might as well just be considering yourself 24 7. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and people think that if you don't get the role, it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. I think when you audition, you, you get a chance to show your skills in that audition, in, in that audition room. And because they say no to you that first time doesn't mean they're not going to be, you know, if you give an audition that's memorable and it's good and they don't get the part, it doesn't mean that you're a bad, it doesn't mean I had a bad audition. It doesn't mean that I wasn't right for this particular part. Sure. They remember you and they really do remember you. And then months down the road, they go, Hey, remember that guy that did that audition for this role? Yeah. I think we'd be great with this role. And they'll call you back and then you'll book the role because of the original audition that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you're trying out for those bigger roles, get you, you know, in front of different eyes. And you're also, I mean, that would be hard to do, you know, working through all that. No, yeah, all those I, eyes I, on you is. all the time. Say again? All those eyes on you all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm kind of used, I'm kind of used to it now over the years of being, especially being in karate, I was always performing in front of people. I mean, hundreds and thousands of people on stages and I was fighting performances and stuff so at a very young age i was used to being in front of people plus you know i danced for years i danced for the rap group the yin yang twins for almost 15 years and i toured with them and i would i would be in front of uh, of an audience of two hundred fifty thousand people you know dancing in front of them and that doesn't bother me what bothers me is when i have you know only three or four people in front of me yeah. that's when i get nervous. <laughs> <there. laughs> you know that's, that's the sweat. I'm like, oh man, if I can, I'm like, can you bring more people in? That's <laughs> why I don't. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you, but you gotta get in that mindset. Whenever you do an audition for a role, you know, you, I try to really become the character that they want me to be. Right. You know, right. the character is that, look, I, I don't drink. I've never done a drug in my life. I don't smoke. You know, if someone does it, that's on them. That's just, just not what I do, you know? But if I have a role that I have to play a drug addict, I'm gonna study how they act, what their tics are, what they walk like, you know, what they smell like. And I want to become that drunk, even though I don't do them, I, I want to be so real that you would think that I was on drugs. You know, right. I'm very, I'm very keen you know, on method acting. That's just me personally. But a lot of acting, what people don't tell you is there's a lot of truth in acting and you have to bring a little bit of yourself to every role that you play. And that's how point. you envision that person. Yeah. 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 So um, just to continue on this sort of Marvel, Marvel train, um, we've, we've heard how you got into Marvel. Look, um, you know, obviously over the last sort of 15 years or so, we've been, um, we have been, uh, I think he's, I think he's moving there. Yeah, I am. I, I have moved to another room. Okay. Fair enough. So uh, can you hear me well, while you're moving? I'll carry on talking. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, we've obviously been inundated over the last sort of 15 years with this fantastic, uh, live action content, 
um, Marvel content. And um, what just generally, obviously, it's too much to say. What did you think of this movie? What did you think of this movie? What did you think? So, just generally speaking, what have you thought of the MCU and how that's uh, being an actor? Um, uh, you know, what have you thought about how that's you know how that's transitioned from the books that you read and from the excitement that you felt as a as a as a child and now being a, a, a aspiring actor or a, as you put it, a struggling actor, um, and watching the MCU grow to what it is today from from where it started. Well, I think it's grown. I think it's grown. I think it's, it's become better over the years, especially the technology that they're using now to do things. You know, the green screens and bringing things to life, and the, all these. You know, I mean, the CGI. I mean, it's just unreal nowadays. Um, and if you think like the, the first, the first, I guess, movie that came out was in two thousand. Was X, that was when that really kind of started? If I remember correctly, I think Eggman what started it all, and. I was so thrilled to watch it, but at the same time, like, I was perfectly disappointed because I wanted my Wolverine to be short. I wanted him to be column book accurate, you know, and you cut, I'm, I'm, I'm the exact height. So when I saw that man and I'm, I'm looking at him talking to, to um, James Barton, and I'm thinking, wait, man, like these guys are the same age. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? I, I, you know, those are the, the little things like that disappointed me, but at the same time, Hugh Jackman brought his own flair to the character, you know? But you also have to remember that studios have a lot to do what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. So, in my opinion, Jackman's best performance was in closing. I think yep. that's Ouch. definitely that he got to see. Because uh, I wanted him I wanted him to go complete for his rage on everybody when he falls. You know, because anyway, if you when we read the comics, you know, he did that. He just demolished everything in sight. He was like a, a killing machine. And he didn't know where he was at the time. And Logan was the closest that they got. And I don't think they even talked about the story what he could have done. I didn't like the suit. They weren't X Men. That was kind of cheesy. But there's certain things I did like. There's low teams or eggs I enjoyed. They could have done it differently, uh, but they did. They chose to do it the way they did. And like again, I said, that's the studio allowing the director to do what the latter to do. Okay. For the Wolverine, for the Wolverine, they wanted Jackman to play. He knocked it out of the park. Yep. You know, but they yeah. did that get specific version. about what, yeah, who they wanted to show you. Hmm. Yeah, exa yeah. Exactly. I mean, this is the guy who was, I mean, I, I'm sure you guys know, but the original actor that was going to play the role was Dougal Ray Scott. Yep. Uh, from Mission Paul, he had an accident, but before him, who the studio wanted to have was Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe, well, yeah. Russell Crowe did not want to take the role. And so Russell Crowe is the one who said, hey, I have a friend. Uh, I was mad at him for that. <laughs> I didn't want a guy. I, I was mad at Russell Crowe for that. I didn't want a guy with that was in musicals. I was yeah, exactly. totally against it. Totally but against that's it. That's what's amazing, man, is that, that when you get something like Hugh Jab, that, you know, and he did it. Look, he did a, he did, he did do a bad job. I, he did a good job. He was. Never been in a film before. He for an audition, Brian Singer, and he, and he landed the role. And I don't know if it was because he did a good audition or Brian Singer said, hey, I need somebody. You're going to be in. You know, but he, but yeah. it changed his entire life. And heck, three years before that, guys, and I think you guys should know this, is they went and Bob Hoskins <laughs> from Who Framed Roger Rabbit to play the role of Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah, I've, said, I've, said, I've, heard, I've heard things like that before. No comment. You know, <laughs> who knows? It could have been. He could have been a great. He could have been great. I'm glad that didn't happen. Makeup you do nowadays. Makeup and, and hair and and prosthetic can change you to anybody that you want to change. It, if you've if you've seen a long Good Friday, yeah, Bob Hoskins can can let loose. He can let loose. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, but um, okay, cool. So so um, uh, you know, what about where it's going? So obviously well, we've got if you had this big. So, and I was going to get to um. Uh, san diego comic con as well in a minute but oh man we forgot about that didn't we yeah we are, i haven't don't worry i've got <laughs> I, so, like, like, we're, we're really, like now i i think they're on the right track uh i feel like that they're i feel like they're getting a little bit lazy though you know i feel like they're they're getting a little lazy with some stuff um for, for like for example the thor movie you know it's kind of a comedy and i didn't really want to see a comedy i wanted to see a, a but I, I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed the film, and I went into enjoying the film. Um, you know, some of my favorite films from the past were I love Infinity War in, in, in Endgame. I love uh, The Winter Soldier. 
Captain America, the Winter Soldier, or I like Civil War. And like I said, you got to remember that they can't do exactly what the comic book says, but they have to. No, can't put that on screen. You know, the, uh, they got to do certain things. For example, like when uh, they did the Infinity War and the Hulk crashes, we all know that the Infinity Gauntlet, but it was the Silver Surfer that crashed, yep. and they couldn't do it because they didn't own the rights to the Silver Surfer because Fox owned the rights to the Silver Surfer. And that's yeah. what they did buy at the time. So they had to change some things to make it work. But, it, you know, it worked. And it, 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 it did work. They still paid homage to common stuff and certain stuff, but they also make their own little twist and, and turns to it to make it their own as well. So they're not completely... They can't do everything the common does. Now, some of the stuff you just wouldn't wouldn't want to, no matter how, you know, you want to see it, you just... That's not going to work. Yeah. Exactly. And I think we that people who are common with it, I have to go into a film with an open mind that it's not going to be exactly like the cop it, 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 because they're just copying what they did. It, who wants to do that? You know, you got to put a little twist on it. But I like I like the Kang thing that they're going to do and, and the whole multiverse. I hope it doesn't confuse people that don't, you know, read comics because it can be confusing to people. The whole multiverse and you know, this, this is the 616 and this is the 828. This person's here, this person's there. But Hopefully, um, with everything happening in the Disney Plus series with the She-Hulk coming out, um, you know, you got the new Captain America thing coming out in the series. I'm really hoping that everything connects some way. And it doesn't all have to connect either. I don't think everything has to connect. I think that certain things have to connect to make it make it sit there. And, and that's the nice thing about what Marvel did in the very beginning, that first, you know, first phases, they would have the little ether exit at the end that would connect every you know, adventure to the thing until that final phase ended, and then you start the phase two that did the same thing. That was a nice little touch, but I don't think it has to have an Easter egg at every end of the film. It doesn't have to connect to everything. I think what it needs to do is it enjoyable for everybody that are fans and not fans. I think that we need to go into a sit down on our couches on a TV show and watch it and 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 watch it and think, man, this is great. This was entertaining. I really enjoyed this. I can watch it again. That's how I determine what movies are like. If I can watch the movie more than twice, then I love it. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's uh, one, one thing I took away there is it sounds like you like the Russo brothers tone in the movies better than you like uh, Taika Waititi's tone in the movies. I, a, I, I, no, I, I will admit, I love Ragnarok. I thought Ragnarok was great. It was enjoyable. I laughed, but it was, I thought it was a good. It was well balanced. But yes, I do like the Russo brothers a lot. I like the directing style. Um, I, I like it when a director comes to me and says, hey, I want you to try this, and I want you to do this part, because that's what a director is supposed to do. They're supposed to give the actor, you know... Give her a vision, the overall vision. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. An overall vision of what you're, what they want. You, know, you got to bring your own folks to a character, you know, but as far as the overall film goes, they have to direct it. They have to know where they're going. How to do. Sometimes, these characters, they don't know how the person's going to end or what's going to happen to them. And, you know, I might be in a film and I might play Wolverine and I might know that I'm going to kill Jean Grey or Jean Grey might not know I'm going to be the one that kills her. And so the reaction that they give to happen is a truthful for rea- for reaction. Sure. So it, it, yeah. And that's the beauty of film that you can surprise people. It's like take Empire Strikes Back. Now we knew uh, on the set that uh, Darth Vader was going to say, I am your father. And so when Luke screamed, Mark Hamill says it in a few interviews because I had no idea it was going to happen. And when they were in the theater watching it, Harrison, they, uh, Mark Hamill does this great impression of Harrison Ford. And Mark says that Harrison Ford uh, looks at Mark Hamill when it happened. And he goes, hey, kid, why the hell did you tell me this was going to happen? <laughs> it was a shock to everybody. You know, yeah. without these, you can't shock people because everyone leaks something. Everybody had to... Oh, yeah. Or for has it that, you know, the storm is going to be electric you know, by whoever, you know, whatever the case may be. And stuff, don't burn it. Like, you know, go there and enjoy it. Have fun. Talk about it after. You know, not before, like, not a year before where people make a stuff. I don't. People you know, trying to sell sell that, you know. know. You think. So he's not. So, so, uh, so my next question and my last question before I was going to ask you about, um, uh, CDCC um, was going to be about the X-Men and about 
what kind of what we've spoken about with these contracts that look like they're in place and et cetera, et cetera, and secret wars. Um, can you see, cause there's been a few sort of theories going around and it's not, it's a theory that I quite like. Um, can you see, so Hugh Jackman, Halle Berry, um, James Marsden, et cetera, et cetera, turning up in secret wars as a bit of a swan song before it's kind of, before the X-Men is reset within the Marvel Cinematic Universe after 2025? I, I don't think that it's possible that for it to happen. I, and when it comes down to it, this is, this is be really sad for me to say, but it's going to come down if they get paid the money that they want. Mm. And, sure. and, I, and I hate to say, you know, when those, those people have been in Hollywood for a long time and they want to get paid and they, because they're put work in. And that's why, like I said before, I'd rather see a unknown artist get it because they're going to do it because they love to the act. These, these guys are at a point now where they love it, but they love the funny more in my opinion. Okay. That's, that's, that kind of hurts my heart to say it because I wouldn't mm -hmm. have had the same sort of, uh, uh, desire to, to make it because they love it and they're passionate about it. That, oh, I love that I'm going to get paid. $10.5 million for a 30, 30 second sleep. Yeah. That's why I could see, to Andy's question, I could see a mix of the new and old, not, not like the, the yeah. first initial team, but like a mix of the new and the old X-Men. If they yeah. put them in secret wars, like Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, the new actress who played Storm in the new series, um, maybe even have the, the one who played Cyclops in the new series, but then have Professor X come in from the old one. I could see a nice, them doing a mix up of that for secret wars to kind of, yeah, yeah that hey, would, that would be also great to have, like, it would be cool when 2025 hits that they don't do an X-Men film right away, that they introduce these characters, like, individually yeah, in, in, a, yeah. in a film. Like, you know, you might see Professor X come up, you know, in a, in a scene, uh, or a Cyclops come in a scene, uh, or a Storm being, being in a Wakanda uh, as a small child and a little <laughs> Easter egg. <laughs> I think that would be great to do as well. Um, one thing I am going to do is, um, I'm going to actually campaign for the role. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to make a little short scene, um, uh, uh, as the character, uh, Logan and Wolverine. And I'm, uh, I, I got a guy that I know in, um, here in North Carolina is a great writer. He's a writer. So we're going to, we're going to film it. Oh, we're going to campaign. I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to see if I can get a petition. See if I can get a chance to audition. I mean, look, the way I look at it is this, there's. I have just as good a chance as anybody else. Yeah. You know, you're going to miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. That's exactly. it. Exactly. And the way I look at it is if I need people behind me, I mean, look, look at, uh, Paul Giamatti who played Rhino in the Spider-Man 2 film. He yeah. got that, he got the role because he campaigned for it. He petitioned yeah. for it. He wanted that role. And he said it on live TV, I was the role. And he made a little audition tape and sent it in. And the director was like, so shocked that he did it. He's like, oh, fuck it. He's like, I'm gonna give him a shot. Miss Marvel, <laughs> Miss Marvel, her stories. I like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, Iman Villani. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I don't know how she got that role. She her, was, her family yeah. talked her into it. She wasn't gonna do it. Ah, oh, sent in a sent in a video audition and got the call. You know, and she was a huge fan. Yep, already to start with. Yep. Oh, that's she the, basically. That's awesome. Yeah, she was looking yeah. for casting for that role because she's basically as herself in that role because she's a huge right. fan girl in her life so i they, totally agree it's perfect there you go so and something else too that i, I want to see in the x-men film or any of the mutant films with the character with the character wolverine i i really don't either either i got the role let's say not the wood that would be awesome <laughs> but i don't want wolverine to be a, a central character of the films i, 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 mean, I don't want him to be with the x-men right away i want him to be riding solo for a while you know He's a loner. Let him go be a loner for a while exactly. and get with the X-Men later, exactly. you know? And that's what like about Hugh Jackson is that they based that entire franchise on him. Mm -hmm. And none of those other actors yeah. really got to shine as characters. And I think that was a mistake on their part, on, on Fox doing that, that... That's they, studio thinking, though. Know, that's... Jackson, you know, they, they based that whole series on him. And like you said, let him be a loner. Let him be, you know, his, you know appear here and there, you know, uh, a few lines here. Don't, don't make him a, a central character. You need to make the whole of the mutants a central character. 
Yeah. It was, you yeah. Know, we got a little comment. That's why Stanley wrote that book is because he, him and Jack Kirby were Jewish and they went, you know, they saw what was going on back, back in those days, you know, with, uh, the war and, 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 the, and the concentration camps and their families were part of that too. And so he wrote those characters, not as just, and it, even, I think Stan Lee even said it, he was in the sixties when the segregation and stuff, you know, for, 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 for uh, African-American people, he wanted to make anybody's skin color the same, you know? And that's why he wrote it. He wanted to be, you could be, uh, you could be black, you could be white, you could be, uh, Italian, whatever color you want to be. You could be any ethnicity you want to be, but if you were a mutant, you were an outcast. Yeah, that that's the, that what everyone else was put in, in, in the world. And that's what this film, that film needs to, needs to be about. I think it needs to be about the separation of people and, and making us, the mutants, as people that they look down upon, you know, and I think that's what the story went into play, I think. And like I said, I don't want Wolverine to be a central character. I want him to be a character that shows up and then build, build him up over the, over the course of what, however many years they do it. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. think Marvel can do another 10 years of films or another 20, like, like they did the first role. I think they're going to have a lot of things that they're going to do. Um, and I think they're not going to bring the X-Men out or Wolverine or any of those people out until everything starts to die down. I think once everything starts to die down, that's, they're going to wait and go, okay, here you go. Here's your X and it's going to weep out everything. Rekindle everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, Jarin, there's a little comment from the group. That's Alex, by the way. Yeah. So Alex, uh, I was wondering, um, if the contract thing influenced the fake Pietro and that's why they use the Fox actor, Evan Peters in WandaVision. I mean, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good point about the Fox contract. Uh, then. Actually, uh, so yes, it is. And the reason, and I, I, this is, I, I know this answer to, so yes, um, this is true. And the reason why it is true is because if I remember, if I remember correctly, um, mutants could be used in the Avengers movie. They had called them, uh, I think special abilities or they had, they used a word, uh, in the, in the film, they say they don't come enhanced. They could, what, it was enhanced. What, what is it? They called them enhanced. Yes. Hey. They could not use the word mutant because mutant is part of the X Men franchise. Copyrighted, and yeah. That's why they couldn't do it. Yeah. It, yeah. it was it was like under contract that they could use the word mutant. They weren't allowed to use the mutant, so that's why they couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's a good point. Hurt. Um, look, so look, before we go, because we've got about five, six minutes left, um, I, I just want to get your just quick views and yeah. just a little bit of experience on um, San Diego Comic Con last week, because we know you were there. We've seen the images of you as a... Uh, oh, yeah. And all of that. Um, how was that? I mean, that was uh, obviously just as an event for you, you know, uh, as, you know, doing your thing. Just I give me a little you, brief. Man. God, it was... I'm still on a high from Comic Con, and I'm not coming off from Cloud Nine. It was one of the most amazing experiences I have ever, ever got to do. I mean, I can't even put it in words. The thrill being in San Diego, the people, let me tell you something, the people were amazing. And not just the Comic Con people, I mean, the local people, the people who lived there were amazing. They were so nice. That's awesome. So That's good. Bright, so helpful. And I didn't even get to do half the things that I wanted to do. Uh, if you guys don't have, if you guys are not part of it, but change to on Instagram, there's a group called Power of X Men. They are amazing. They're a whole X Men group and they dedicate themselves to X Men, uh, X Men stuff, mutant stuff. And if you, if you've never heard of them, uh, join their group. It's called Power of X Men on, on Instagram. They're really awesome. Um, I, I got to dress up as my favorite characters, you know, Wolverine, of course. I did, uh, Weapon X was awesome. The, the Weapon X? Yeah, I liked that. That was awesome. I liked it all, but that was my favorite. And my, 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 my friend, Rod, man, uh, built that for me, helped me build that costume. I was wondering, it looked like it took some hours. Uh, 3D printed the helmet and then I had a make box. Wow, we're it, losing you a little bit. about an hour to do all the makeup. That's too long. Um, That's not terrible. I, yeah, it wasn't bad at all. It was pretty, I, I did the rib, the neck, the little, uh, the little swimmer thing on my chest, make it look like veins were popping out. That didn't take long at all. But the, 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 the whole, the whole experience itself, 
God, I'm tell you, I, I, I was walking in the street, and I, and at one point, it stood still for two and a half hours every day because people were wanting to take pictures with me. Wow. I, I couldn't even move. So I didn't get to do half the town that I wanted to go. I at least saw Hall H, um, at, at, you know, for, for all the uh, movie stuff. I got to the very end and got to see a, a glimpse of, I think, Guardians of the Galaxy preview. But it was just, I mean, it was just an amazing experience. I mean, I love doing it. And it was great because I'm in Gizmodo. I'm in IO9. I'm in Entertainment Weekly. I'm all over YouTube right now with the cost that I did. And I'm right. Uh, there was a, uh, when, uh, posted a picture of me for the Comic Con on, uh, a Facebook site called, um, I think it was called, uh, House of Wolverine or House of X, something like that. And that's, it, I'm, I'm on, I'm in that group. And this is their, yeah, well, that, that was pretty funny. And he's got some good exposure. But I mean, he was amazing. If, if you've never gone to it, yeah, I, I did. And, 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 yeah, and I'm going to Dragon Con in Atlanta in September. And I'm going back to LA Con in December. And then in March, I'm going to WonderCon in Anaheim. Right. And, you know, for years, I didn't do this because I was always afraid of, of not having the money to do it or going broke because of it. And I tell you guys, I, I mean, a lot of you, I went broke going to Comic Con. I mean, I went broke. And we had money. And, and I could make money again. Yeah. You know, I work, I'll, I'll make my paycheck and I'll, I'll, me not going the, would have been a, we're, we're losing you a little bit there like see if you can see if you can just find a point i think you experience it probably go every year and right let luck like, see if you can find a point because we'll see if you can find a point where we've got some decent oh uh, 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 yeah you we're losing you just a little bit. We've only got a few seconds. We've only got about a minute this. left. Yeah, that's all right. I just want to sign off really because we've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, and I just wanted to just thank you for coming on. And yes, it's thank been, you. At, it's been actually, yeah. been, I, I was, well, I would say this, if you ever have a chance to go to Comic Con in San Diego. Go. C2, I'm going to C2E2 in Chicago here, uh, later on this month. Oh, did yeah, go, man. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, Comic Con is a great you get to get to meet people that are are like you in a sense, and they are and they're artistic, and it is fun to do it. The pictures are great, and it's, and you get to build these costumes, and you get to become these characters that we all grew up loving. Yeah, nice. Look, look, uh, we're going to close off now, mate, because we've been talking for about an hour. Um, I, we've we've not got through we've we've not actually got through some of the stuff we wanted to get through, but I don't care about that. This has been absolutely brilliant. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you and hearing your stories and your 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 passion and your desire and your commitment to your craft is incredible, absolutely incredible. And I feel honoured that I could sit here and listen to you and, and listen to your story and you share your story with us. Um, so I, I mean, myself, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking to us. And you know, hey, you thank can... you guys for let, allowing me to be with you. So I really truly appreciate it. And no, I'm, glad, pad, I'm, I'm glad our paths cross. Peter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can share, you can share whatever you want on our group. We will support you when you do your movies, when you're petitioning, get it on our group, you know, get a bit, um, we've, we've got, you know, a couple of thousand people there that can, um, that can try and support you. So we'll be more than happy to do that whenever we can. Thank you. And if you guys have Instagram, please follow me. I have two Instagrams. My first and last name is Lucky Man Jody. And then I have my, uh, cosplay one is the, uh, the Wolverine cosplayer. Okay, we'll, we'll share all that on our group, and we can get on there and follow you up. All right, um, but we're gonna we're gonna say goodbye, uh, guys. Thank you for listening. Um, it's been it's been a wonderful show. I've really enjoyed it. See you, um, everybody. Yeah, take care. Thanks very much. Thank Thanks, folks. All right. See you guys. Take care. Why don't you tell them about the time we